All right, after a few months without posting anything, here I come with uh, with another video. I've just seen this issue pop up on the on the threads again, and uh, it's a how to scan with a how to design a case scanning a tie base. And so I have a I have a case here. It's a simple uh, single unit um, crown that I'm going to be using, and I just wanted to go over that option on, on how to design. Uh, implant supported structures so to create the order form we will just uh, click on the tooth number we're going to be working on we'll select uh, anatomic crown and then here is where it becomes uh, it can become a little bit confusing especially with the new um, with, with the new user interface so we're doing a screw retained but here is where we're going to have to select what kind of workflow we want to follow whether we're scanning scan body, which is what's selected right now, and it's not what we're trying to do, or say, <clears throat> don't use a scan body. And that's exactly what we're gonna be doing. So as you can see here, the um, the icon is that of a tie base. So that's what we're going to select. We'll click okay, save our order form, and then we'll jump right into the design. Okay, so we'll load things in the order that's required. And so I just wanna I, I just wanna show you really quick what the uh, what the scans will look like. So the the model scan, if you will, in this case is an intraoral scan. So the tie base was placed in the mouth and scanned. Okay, but obviously there's gonna be information missing because part of this tie base is going to be subgingival. And so what we have to do is then have uh, take another scan of the tie base by itself outside of the mouth so we can gather all that information and that's already been done so before we do anything with our workflow i'll go into expert mode go to tools add remove mesh and here it's very important that i select the following i will select extra multi die scan okay so that allows me to replace a single part of the model uh, with the scan that i'm going to be importing so i will select load and then I'll select the noble tie base or Nobel tie base uh, that's here okay and so this is what it looks like all right so now look at all the information that the tie base has that I cannot see in the original scan and so that's what we're trying to do we're going to replace this information with the information that's here okay so that's the scan that I want I'll click OK then I'm gonna right click on it in expert mode and I'm gonna say edit mesh and then I'm going to select the part of the tie, oh, oh, the part of this scan that I really need, which is just the tie base itself. So everything else I'm just going to delete. Okay, and there I have it. That's all I need. Now, as soon as I start the wizard, the software is going to ask me for the scan data orientation, which we'll fix. And then right after that, it'll go into the process of aligning uh, the two meshes. Okay, so in this in this particular case, we are going to be using. Uh, these uh, notches to do the alignment and usually one point is enough and if it isn't then we just have to continue looking for other uh, more information that, that we can utilize here so maybe two points would do it nope so then we'll, we'll try three points and there it is okay so now everything is aligned correctly look at all the information that I was missing okay so if I was to design the crown on top of this then obviously my margins are not gonna uh, are not gonna be correct so we'll, uh, we'll accept this as the correct alignment, go to the following step, and now notice what the software has done. It has replaced the original scan with the new one that I just imported in. And then from here on out, it's a basic, uh, let's call it crown design. So we can go into the detect mode, click on here, uh, the margin is detected. We can then play around with the margin to make sure that it's in the correct position. Once we have that, then we'll go next. And this is part of the workflow that's different here. So immediately after that, uh, the software is going to ask us for this, uh, the screw channel. So we can play with the diameter of the screw channel by using this control point here or, or this control option. So what I try to do is just match that, match this shape here as close as possible. Maybe overbuild it a little bit if necessary. 
And then if I want to establish the correct insertion direction, then I have to look down on the tie base and make sure that every that, that I can see um, as much as possible on every side. And then I can tell the software to reset using the direction, um, the view direction. And so now the screw channel is parallel to the point of view where I have it. Okay, and then from there on out, we can just continue uh, forward. Now, there's a mistake that a lot of people make in this step, which is, oh, I want an angular screw channel, so I'm gonna ang angle it here. Although it's possible, that's not what you're supposed to do. Okay, what you're supposed to do is, um, let me let me align this again, is continue forward in the uh, uh, normal design process, and then you're gonna angulate the screw channel when you're doing the, the, the abutment bottoms which will be the, the step after setting up our crown. So let's let's pretend for demo's sake that this is good. And so here, when we start designing the emergence profile, this is where we will go and start angulating things. Okay, okay so if I want to angulate it, then this is where I would do that. Okay, I can angulate it by uh, dragging that, that arrow around, or I can visualize the, the, the crown and say clickable, and then just click on the surface of the tooth where I want the screw channel to come through. All right, so then um, just so you know, that's that's where you're supposed to do the, the angulation if any angulation needs to be done. From there on out, it's just a, a regular um, um, uh, screw retain design. So it, it behaves very much like a crown. And so I'll just go through that really fast. Uh, obviously not looking to do anything pretty here. Just, just wanna get to, to the end of it. All right, and then the software is going to ask whether we want to create this uh, this structure here to protect our screw channel. If I'm not doing any reductions where porcelain is going to be stacked on top, then I always just shut this off. It just it, the finish is a lot better, and, and and the reason being, it is very hard to get that structure to match uh, to to sit flush with the surface of the tooth, and so you might as well just shut it off, and then the software will still punch the hole through, but you don't have to worry about. Uh, unevenness on your uh, your surface and so then that's going to be the, the final result uh, again I apologize for the ugly design uh, but that's that's not the, the main purpose of, of this and so the benefits of using this workflow is that you can you obviously can go here into your crown bottoms and you can play with the cement gap so if the fit that you're getting from your scan bodies isn't good enough then you can utilize this technique to still be able to design uh, screw retain uh, structures, but you get to play around with this with the cement space so that things either fit more sn uh, more snug or more loose depending on the results that you're getting. So hopefully this uh, this video will help you. If you have any questions, post them on the comments, and uh, if you have any requests for any videos, post them on the comments as well.